Okay, it's better, can me? I need to drink. In here? So at this time, it was pretty much when like Ankara started was really the big thing. Mm -hmm. like African print material was really a big thing. Everyone's going to weddings or different events and needed someone to sew their clothes for them. So I was making quite a lot of dresses for people at that time. So that's pretty much how I started doing the whole dress thing. I hadn't quite figured out exactly what steps I wanted to take in to actually going into the whole bridal scene. And also because the wedding scene, like anybody would kind of see now, is like so big. It's huge. It's huge. Where do you start from yeah, basically? Like exactly. how do you make your mark? That's the thing. And then also just kind of getting, just kind of like being affiliated with all the people that are actually in the industry. Um, I didn't know anybody in the industry. I didn't know like all the different vendors and stuff. So it wasn't even like, you know, you can talk to them, oh, like, how do you think yeah. you can go about it? There was none of that. Um, that could again, be a put off for some people, you know, yeah. not knowing where to start from. Because it's quite intimidating. Yeah, it just is. because I would say obviously back then, that was like four years ago. Obviously now it's a lot bigger than it was back then. But it, it was, it's, it's intimidating because if you're getting, in, and also, I was what? Carol, yeah. 19. So let me ask, what didn't put you off then? Why didn't you feel put off? Why were you like, yeah, I can do this, you know? You know what, what I think was it? throughout the whole process, at, every, at any stage, what I'd say what never put me off was the fact that I didn't see how far it could go. Like okay. in terms of my, um, the vision that I had is like the vision grew as I grew. So I know like a lot, I think one thing that puts people off sometimes when it comes to starting a business or embarking on a new journey or whatever it might be, is that they see this massive, they have this massive picture of where, they, where they're trying to get, to get to and they just can't see how they're going to go from just one point being here to, to being a millionaire or yeah. being a billionaire. But that was, I didn't really look at that. For me, it was like, I kind of, like it was like, okay, yeah, of course you have that big dream, but I kind of broke it down into steps. So I was always looking at the next step rather than the finishing line. So my next step at that stage would have been just to make like what? At that point I had made three wedding dresses. So at that point, maybe my next step was just to be able to get five wedding dresses in a year rather than to have two studios and have staff mm. and employ. Do you get what I mean? So that wasn't really what I was looking at. So for me to get to the stage to make double the amount of wedding dresses that I was making didn't seem like such a big deal because it just seemed like, okay, well, I mean, I got three, I made three wedding dresses. Already, so. I'm sure I can get three more. Mm -hmm. It just, it just didn't seem like such a big deal to me. Um, I quite, I would say that I'm quite an optimistic person. Like I couldn't really see, I couldn't really see the negative side in it. I couldn't see how it, it just seemed, work, it just yeah. seemed like a good idea to mm -hmm. me. And I, I just thought any anything that comes, I, I, I just couldn't see. I couldn't see how it wouldn't work. Mm -hmm. I couldn't see how it wouldn't work. It just was gonna work for me. I decided that in order for me to do it and actually for everyone to actually be able to see what I'm doing and for it to be a good like a good show or for it to be a good launch I needed to do it big so I decided that I was going to do a launch um, and I, I, this I think this is probably the biggest the biggest dream that I had to date so I had this picture in my head of this massive launch it's gonna be a massive fashion show it's gonna be like 300 people yeah. sitting there, I'm gonna have like a runway, I'm gonna have like 15 dresses coming down the runway, all these tour models, <laughs> to do that. And then like, as soon as I dreamt it, I kind of just said, this is a stupid idea, it's not gonna work. Um, and then I just wasn't settled. The idea that I had, mm. I had sat down and noted down how much it would cost to do it. And I was getting figures like 30,000 pounds just to put on a put big on fashion show. show. Literally, I just wasn't, like, I would have dreams of this show and it just wasn't, I just wasn't okay with not doing it. So I said, I'm gonna do the show. Okay.
My dad, he had always, from a young age, had always told us it's important to save, it's important to save. From a young age, like when we were in secondary school, you know what I mean? You get dinner money from your Sounds parents. Sounds like my mom. Mm -hmm. Yeah, like it's good. I think it's really good. I'm very grateful for the way I was raised. So, um, from a young age, so you remember in secondary school, you get dinner money? Yeah. Um, from when we were in year seven, my dad gave us all bank accounts. Um, set up his bank accounts, gave us all our cards, and said that he doesn't, he's not giving us cash. That the way he's going to do our lunch money is he's going to do direct debit. So he set up direct, told us what direct debit is, standing orders, all that mm -hmm, stuff. Mm -hmm. So he set up direct debit for us from year seven, so 11 year old. Mm -hmm. yeah. So he used to do, send us our monthly um, Din like dinner money, money yeah. at the start of every month. Okay. And say that's for the month. So yeah, if it's you up to you how you it, manage it. If you spend it on the first day, it is your business. No yeah. money, no food for the rest yeah. of the month. So obviously, you can imagine. Like, a couple of months, I'll be doing things like buying jackets, <laughs> buying shoes with my lunch money, thinking that I could just say, Daddy, can I get an extra? Yeah. You know, you're getting nothing. So some days I was eating bread and butter for lunch, but that's my business because I knew. You spent your money how you exactly. want, yeah. So um, from a young age, he kind of just always told us it's really important to save. So from all the different dresses and stuff that I was doing, you remember I lived at home with my parents, I didn't yeah. have any responsibilities. So I think the most I bought was food because I like to eat. Um, so do I. Yeah, food is important. <laughs> Avocado is important. So um, <laughs> I, I, I pretty much didn't pay for anything other than my um, studio yeah. rent, which I had. So I have managed to save like fifteen thousand pounds. I don't actually know how I did that. Wow! Thinking about it now, saving fifteen thousand pounds is really difficult. I guess I've got responsibilities. Fifteen. Yeah, but this was over the course of like my life, basically. That's amazing. Oh, so sorry. A part I missed out. So when I was younger, I yeah. used to do hair. Before I started, multi talented. Doing, uh, yeah, I used, to, I used to do hair when I was younger because yeah. I knew how to do hair. So I used to do hair for people. So from that, I used to, I started doing hair when I was eleven. So weird. I can't imagine how eleven year olds do that. But, like plaiting hair, yeah, braiding. Yeah, plaiting hair, braiding hair. Yeah, it was quite cool actually. So um, and back then, like people would pay good money to do Definitely. hair. Like, so I, I know weekends. I know it's not a lot now, but when I was like eleven, I was getting like fifty pounds every weekend. And that was pretty good. Of course. But at a, that lot age. Of the, a lot of the money I would use. I don't I used to have a thing with jackets. I used to buy jackets all the time from H&M. So I used to buy <laughs> a lot of money in jackets. And then eventually I started saving it. So yeah, I guess from the age of 11 to the age of 19, I had managed to save £15,000. That's incredible. Is, Honestly, I mean, it's a long time to save that. No, but, but I guess, I guess the, the mentality sense, the mentality, to, because yeah. obviously I feel that's a key, you know, yeah. um, trait to have to be able to, to, be able that, to save your money yeah because yeah, now obviously as a businesswoman yeah, you need important. to know how to I manage your money that mentality again because <laughs> <laughs> i find it easier to save back then than i do that really? I to eat all the time. <laughs> but um yeah so i had saved just about 15k um and then so i was like okay cool so i have fifty thousand pounds i need to do this show Brilliant. but the kind of dresses that i had designed in my head and put down on paper were like serious dresses like i had caught inspiration from people like Ellie Saab and mm. um, Vera Wang and Monique Cunier, etc. So I was like, if I'm going to do this, I need to do it properly. I need to do the show. I need to make sure the dresses are immaculate. I need to do detail. I just want to do it properly. So when I worked out everything for the price of the collection and for the show, it was coming to around thirty thousand mm -hmm. pounds. I was like, I thought fifteen. How am I going to make the other Half, fifteen? Yeah. How? So then um, I heard about crowdfunding. So I was like, okay, let me do crowdfunding. Let me go and try and get like just everybody to help me raise mm -hmm. 15k mm -hmm. and i did like the whole biography thing the whole explanation made the kickstarter page and then left it there for like a month and i didn't post it and then i just started thinking oh like the whole idea of asking people for money like random people like i'm literally begging yeah. people for money i don't know these people why are random people from the public gonna, gonna want to support your money? vision yeah it doesn't mm -hmm. make any sense so then eventually prayed about it i just really like i was really i was thinking about it for so long and i just thought okay wait what do i have to lose it's true nothing What's about, the okay, my nervous? dignity but other than that nothing <laughs> so the first couple of days i'll go in and like you know when the when the, like the excitement is up i think in the first day or the first couple of days yeah. we made like four thousand pounds so i was like oh this is amazing <laughs> we're gonna make fifteen thousand pounds in like two weeks at this rate so I'm all like, okay, and then it got to like the fifth day, and it's like fifty pounds. Okay, next day it's like ten pounds. I'm like, okay, what is going on mm. here? Obviously, the momentum has died down, and I'm just like, this is not gonna work. This is just not gonna work. Um, so I get a bit nervous. So I get a bit like, oh, back to square one. Then I was just like pushing it out. Like I've never, 
literally like if somebody needs to do PR I think you should hire me because I have never pushed out something I promoted it like this in my life I was campaigning like crazy and then as time went on um, we finally got to the final day I mean made 50, we made more than 15,000 pounds luckily wow After that show, then yeah, the response, the emails were just coming in. The, but the, the bad thing was that even though I had put the show together, planned the show and all of that, um, I had no idea that I was gonna get that sort of response. So I wasn't ready for the kind of like emails and stuff that were coming. So what ended up having to happen was I had to turn everything down. It was such a shame. I can only make this amount of dresses. So I think I did one dress that year, one wedding dress or two. And then everything else, I was just like, I'm not gonna be able to do it. Then it was towards the end of that year that I was like, okay, I need to get staff. But the thing is, I was like, what the thing is, if I get staff and then I don't get orders, who's gonna pay the staff? <laughs> so it was just like a no-win situation. So I just had to move by faith. So I was like, okay, do you know, I'm gonna get the staff and God just needs to provide the work. You just have to. If you don't provide the work, then why did you give me this talent in the first place? Mm -hmm. So um, yeah, I just started taking people on to work with me. And then yeah, the work came. So at this point, obviously, you've known now that this is not just any, this is a proper talent that I have. It's something yeah. I need to... I had always use. known that. Yeah. So from the... Well, actually, no, in the beginning, I didn't look at it like that. In the beginning, I just thought this is fun. But um, from about the time when I started... Um, from when, around college times, that's when I was looking at it more like a, a gift as opposed to just uh, me being able to sew or me enjoying sewing. Um, and obviously, I'm a born again Christian, so I'm very, very much grounded in my faith and yeah. very much, you know, of the belief that, like, if you've been given a gift, you've been given a talent, you're you really supposed to use, to use it. it. Yeah. You can't just bury it. Like, you're really supposed to do something with it. And I just think that, for me, at the time, like, because of all the whole, you know, why would you want to be a tailor? Why would you want to be a fashion designer? I guess I did all, I did sometimes have that thought in my mind, like, why would I have this sort of talent? Though? Why wouldn't you give me something else that, you know, the ability to do this or the ability to do, or even going as far as, like, you know, if it was meant to be a God-given talent, why wasn't that I could sing so I could sing in a choir or something like that? Because it seems more godly. And to me, it just didn't look, it just looked like you're a fashion designer. Like, what's, what's godly about that? So, kind of thing. Okay. That's to me. That's the way I saw it at the mm -hmm. time. I guess I hadn't seen that. That is the perspective that I was looking at. And then I had to think about. Hold on a minute. One minute. What's? Ha, why is it not godly? Like, yeah. why is it not godly? Is it? Is it? Is it not what you do with the talent? Like, that that's what then godly. glorifies God, isn't it? And obviously, in the industry like this, mm. where there's certain expectations of how you know fashion should be, Perceived, you yeah. need to make yourself stand out exactly. in a way because you may have clients that come to you and requests yeah 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 you know outfit to be made so and then, how do you make your so mark? in the beginning um i was I, I pretty much took any order that came this this was for a short while though but then again i didn't really in the beginning i didn't get wild requests like probably just get maybe like somebody that wants a little bit of cleavage or their dress was quite short or mm -hmm. something like that but then obviously the bigger you get the more known you get the more clientele you get and you know the more you kind of um are going to be faced with tricky situations so uh, I think at first, I, mean, I think a couple of times I did certain outfits that I would never wear, I wouldn't be proud to promote. I just had to look at it and just say to myself, like, if it's not something that I'll be proud to say I did because of my belief again, then it's not something I should be doing. So then I pretty much was just up front and just said, I don't make those kind of clothes because it doesn't stand in line with the kind of clothes that I create because it it's not in line with my beliefs. And then I think at first people were a bit confused, like, sorry, I don't understand, you're like, you're speaking jargon, like, what does that mean? <laughs> so I was just like, yeah, yeah, I just don't really make clothes that are revealing. That's it. So then they were just like, oh, okay. Like, okay, how about you make it? I don't tell anybody that you made it. I was like, oh yeah, but me and God know I made it, so yeah. I can't, sorry. <laughs> so I can't make it. So then, um, I, yeah, but it's not, to me, I think I think maybe the first time you say it, it's like, oh, what are they gonna say? Yeah. They're gonna think. But as soon as you said it the first time, it's like, yeah, I didn't do it. It's and easy. to be honest with you, it kind of it kind of confuses me when I get requests that cool. are wild anyways, because I think, okay, you go onto my page, you don't see that there. 
So why, why did you come to me in the first place? There's so many people that will make that for you. And I'm not, I'm not condemning you. I'm not judging you or anything like that. But I just don't do that. So it's just rather than coming to me and having to let me explain all that to you, just go to someone who makes it. But I think, you know, people do like the Alanuco brand. They want to have an Alanuco dress. But unfortunately, I don't do that. Um, so how do you define the Alanuco brand? Give me three words to define what your uh, brand is. Classy, mm. sophisticated and simple. Simple. Yeah, well, I, I would say it's simple. A lot of people say I'm not, but I think it's simple. I think it's just simple elegance. Like, it's not, I'm not trying to do Over anything. The top, you know, yeah, like... I'm not trying to be dramatic or anything like that. It's just like the whole point of our dresses is not, we're not trying to like create a whole new person. We're not trying to like put an outfit on somebody and then make you look like this celebrity else, yeah. or make you look mm -hmm. like a celebrity. You're supposed to look like yourself, but just like an enhanced version of yourself. It's kind of like mirror and makeup. Like, I'm not somebody who likes to like, you know, completely overwhelm your face with so much to the point that you're unrecognisable. It's like, you know, there's nothing wrong with putting on a little bit of makeup mm. and enhancing the, the features that you already yeah. have and maybe sometimes hiding some flaws that you don't necessarily love. Mm -hmm. But that's how I see it with dresses. Like, you know, you can have certain features that you want to um, want to stand out um, or there's certain, there's certain dresses that will fit you a certain way and that's our job, to be able to make you look as beautiful as you can look rather than creating a whole new person. It's not so about that. how much input do you have clients come in you know they don't have an idea of the kind of dress that they want mm. and they're like oh Bemi you know look what at me you what do you think yeah, yeah, yeah. like you know suit me <laughs> so we have like two sorts of clients you have a client that kind of has seen they know what fits them they know exactly what suits them but they just want that little extra um you know help in terms of the design element of it and with that you just kind of work with them and then you've got the other client who's just like I have no idea what I want but I know I want a Lunico dress and it's in my budget so we pretty much just have to dissect it again, just take everything step by step. So, okay, cool. Let us know the kind of things that you know you definitely don't like. Some people, I mean, like, I don't know what's the whole thing of arms these days, what but like 90% of ladies don't like their arms. Yeah. I don't get I, it. I can relate. Like, <laughs> I'm not talking about, like, whether or not you're the like slimmest person or the curviest person on the planet, nobody likes their arms. <laughs> I don't understand. It's so weird to me. I don't get it. I just don't get it. Like, nobody likes their arms. So, like, first thing I always ask, okay, what are the things that you know you definitely don't want? Mm -hmm. What are the things that you know you definitely do want? And from there, like, a lot of people think they don't know what they want, but by the time you've asked that question, you've kind of knocked out so many different things already. Mm -hmm. And then you can just start working down, okay, what sort of shapes do you like? And then there's also shapes that just won't work with a particular figure or shapes that are best on a particular figure or whatever it might be. And by the time you're kind of there, you've kind of got the foundation and then it's just about sort of building the actual mm -hmm. design on it um, and just kind of breaking it down and to be fair like when I like a lot of my designs um Every time I say this, it makes me laugh a bit, but a lot of my designs come from dreams. So like my last collection that I did, I dreamt the whole collection, not at once, but I dreamt it in little Different bits. Segments. Yeah. Um, so like I'll literally be sleeping and I'll wake up like dramatically, like, oh my gosh, I need to quickly get, or if I'm like sleeping in my bed, I'll have a pen and paper next to me. You would have thought that knowing that I dreamed dresses, I would have, have a pen, a pen and paper next to you. <laughs> did, did it click at the time? So I would just note down, like I'll detail, I'll literally, describe what I saw and when I wake up properly I'll draw it or a lot of the time I would um not I'm not sleeping but a design will come to my mind but it's like it's so clear in my head that I thought like I've seen it in real life mm -hmm. so then I would be like to like carry on the girls that work with me I'll be like oh my days you know that dress that like um Ellie Saab made the one that's whatever I'm describing it to her and she's just like, like no I don't know that this? dress and I'm like the one from the and I'm like trying to find the dress online I'm like hold on but the dress doesn't exist oh my gosh <laughs> that's my design I could be draw it and I'm like oh my gosh okay cool so like yeah I get designs in different ways um what about or online then... magazines like Vogue do you so look stuff I like don't that? yeah okay so this is the thing um as much as I'm a fashion designer yeah. like I'm really not a stylist in any way shape or form I I know this may sound really weird, but I'm not, I don't love fashion. Like, I just be honest. <laughs> I don't. I really, really? don't. No, 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 I don't. I don't. Like, I know there's some, like, I hate shopping with a passion. I hate it. Like, it's one of the worst things that I can do. Oh, no. Don't take me shopping. It's not fun. I go, when I go shopping, I go to one shop. I go to Zara. And if Zara don't have what I have, what I yeah. want, then I go home. I really? just, I'm not interested in shopping. I'm not interested in online shopping. I hate it. I just go, the only reason I like Zara is because everything's colour coordinated. And I only wear black, white and grey. So it's really simple and straightforward for me. <laughs> so if I, I don't, I don't like, I don't like the whole idea of lining up. I don't like the idea of fitting. I don't like it. It doesn't make, it's not fun. I don't like the process of getting ready. I don't like dressing up. I don't like it, which oh is why God. I just wear white t-shirts and jeans all day. Um, <laughs> but so the whole idea of like buying magazines and looking, and looking through, through them. 
like, I know you've kind of got to do it because you need to be in line and with the trends and stuff like yeah. that. But, I mean, there's certain designers who I can look at their stuff all day okay. because of how creative it is. But I don't, I'm not going to lie, I don't love flicking through a magazine and looking at fashion. I don't find it fun. I don't know, it's weird. I don't know. I don't know why I'm like that. Mm -hmm. I don't know. But um, I prefer to do... I like experimenting with things. So I guess I'm like more the creative side of it in terms of like being in my studio, playing around the material, making a mistake and realising, oh my gosh, that's really cool. Mm -hmm. I can put that on the dress and then experimenting with something else or whatever it might be. Yeah. Looking at... There are certain designers who I look at their work and I'm just like, on oh my days, like, how did I even think of that? And then, you know, you kind of draw inspiration from mm -hmm. that. But the idea of like you know, getting lost in Paris in all the different fashion retail, like shops that are there. Nah, not like a cup of tea, not at all. Um, I love that though, it makes you unique, you know, everything's yeah. different. But it's weird, I don't know, how can fashion, nah, I don't really love fashion. <laughs> but yeah, I guess, yeah, it's true, you get inspiration for lots of different yeah, things. Exactly. But yeah. So what's a typical day for you? Like you come into the studio at so, 10, 11? Yeah, my studio, well the studio's open. My, um, the people that work with me, my staff, they start from 10. Mm. They work standard day, 10 to six. Um, I'm supposed to get in at 10, but um, that doesn't really happen because I'm not really the early riser. Oh, no, no, no. I'm an early riser. I just think it at my house on time. I don't know what happens. You kind of wake up in the morning and you start doing all things. Yeah, you know how it goes. But it's mainly because I work late. So I tend to work into the wee hours of the morning as opposed to, you know, finishing early. Mm -hmm. um, but I typically will get in like around 11 or 10, 30, 11. Um, work throughout the day and then I have my consultations for my clients. That's consultations and fittings in the evening and then I will um, go back to work. I'm able to do what I do, spend the hours that I spend doing it and, you know, be able to do it to the best of my ability because I actually enjoy it. So what do you enjoy most, being <clears throat> Bemi the no. dressmaker yeah. or being Bemi the entrepreneur? Uh, <laughs> Bemi the dressmaker. <laughs> <laughs> no, I prefer being the Bemi, I not prefer, but I enjoy it. Uh, Bemi the dressmaker. Yeah, I like being Bemi the dressmaker. That part's nice. I'm very hands-on, so mm -hmm. I like, like, when I, when I, to think when you are literally making something from scratch, yeah, so you started off with a sheet of fabric and you end up with a whole masterpiece. It's quite a rewarding feeling. Like, it's quite great knowing that I did that mm -hmm. sort of thing. I mean, a sketch is that as well, but I guess, I don't know. I think because it's just physical, it's on the person, you see their reaction. Like, that's great, that's amazing. Like, and also, because we do weddings, you know, it's like the, probably it's the biggest day. Thing. And to know that you're a part of that is great. I'm gonna throw this in there. Are you gonna make your own wedding dress? Yeah, 100%. <laughs> you didn't even hesitate. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No one's gonna be wedding dress for me. There's no way. Like, there's no way. No one would want to be wedding dress for me. It's not worth <laughs> the it. There's no point putting yourself under that sort of. <laughs> it's, it's not worth it. I would. Silly. Don't do it.